formed a partnership, a super group, which also will involve a certain young Weinstein, not young Einstein, but a young Weinstein, uh, and that we are working on the second part of R's question, which is about teaching pedagogy and mathematics. Uh, does the computer enhance it? And I don't know about Sage Math, but we, we had a live debate this summer with Stephen Wolfram. I'll put that in the chat room right now, but uh, just so people can refer to it. By the way, if everyone's out there sitting down, your fingers are getting numb and at risk. This is my advertisement now, okay, Eric? You're, now we're going to make some real money. Um, your fingers can get carpal tunnel syndrome unless they're exercised. So please take your finger, stick it on the subscribe button to this channel, and that will do me a big favor. Uh, because we want to get more attention for live streams just like this and the one that we did this summer. Love the hustle. What's that? Love the hustle. Got to hustle. Got to hustle. Gotta okay. Hustle. So what do you think about teaching young Zev <clears throat> and others mathematics by using Mathematica, for example, by our, our friend and compatriot in all things theoretical of uh, theories of everything, Mr. Dr. Stephen Mulfram? I think it's great, but you have to know what some of the problems with it are. So one, one thing I would say, for example, is that um, let's imagine that you have a matrix, um, a, a, a matrix with two rows and three columns. Sometimes in the computer, it makes a difference as to whether it's, um, if, it, if it's three rows of two columns or if it's two columns of three rows, you know, in, in some weird way that's irrelevant to the mathematics, but makes sense as to how the memory is allocated inside of the computer. So I think it's very important to make sure that whatever you're doing in a pedagogical fashion using the technology, you keep track of the ways in which the technology actually fails to mirror reality. For example, in the original formulation of Python, um, there was a problem with the ring of integers where the brilliant founder of Python, Guido Van Rossum, had an idea that the uh, the product of two num of two integers is an integer, so that the uh, if you divide one number by another, you should stay in the same class. But if you divide seven by three, that's not an integer. And so he cast it to the nearest integer. That was an example of something where you thought you understood what you were doing inside of the computer. I'm dividing seven by three, but you might find out that you're you're going to get uh, either the number two uh, or the number three unexpectedly. And so you have to keep track of what it is that the computer is actually doing versus what did you think it was doing. Mm. But I think it's a great, you know, a yeah. sage maxima. Um, Wolfram's Mathematica project. Uh, I would also point to our friends in uh, Austin, uh, Continuum Research with the Anaconda release of Scientific Python. R, all of these are very helpful tools, but don't, you know, just know, know where the map between the real math and the computer's representation of it breaks down. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have another uh, friend this time across the pond, I presume, uh, Walter Bishop. Uh, ch chipping in with a five pound note. Question for Brian and Eric. Up to what point do you agree with string theorists before the disagreement branches out? Um, so I want to say before I ask that question, I asked Shelley Glashow this week, author of this really wonderful book that I want. Uh, this copy is for Zeb when he comes down to visit. 